Welcome to another AVA equipment video review. Today we're going to review the Mazimo Radical 7 Pulse Oximeter. This is a very advanced device. It uses the Mazimo SET, so signal extraction technology. This uses uh, five parallel engines or algorithms to uh, calculate SP2. Um, so what's the difference between this and another and other pulse oximeters? So most pulse oximeter assumes that assume that um, that the arterial blood is the only one that's moving, uh, whereas um, this pulse oximeter um, can identify the venous blood signal because it's uh, less saturated and. Uh, Isolate that signal, cancel the noise derived by it, and thus using just the arterial blood signal to give an accurate pulse rate and SP2. Uh, so this is very useful with in with patients that are moving, um, and so that that's a very very good thing of this pulse oximeter. As you can see here, we have the sensor connector on the back we have another connector that's for the base or the Mazimo root uh, on the front we have those four buttons this is to silence the alarm this is to turn it on and turn it off this is to go back uh, to the normal screen and this one is to go on the profile setting menu we also have this very huge um, uh, touch screen so let's turn it on. It takes a while to turn on so we can connect the cables in the meanwhile. We can either use a normal clip sensor or a transflectance sensor. So let's use the, the clip sensor now. So as you can see now, it says that the sensor is off patient. So let's put it on. So now it's searching the pulse. So the screen is very, very sensitive. As you can see, there are those little lines. Um, so now they're quite tall. Let's change position because I want to show you the signal IQ technology so as you can see now they're becoming taller yeah here so the taller they are the better the is the quality of the signal so this is the signal IQ technology of this pulse oximeter so let's swap finger to have a better reading. Okay. Um, so here on the top part of the screen, we have, um, we can set the sensitivity mode. So now we are in APOD that's adaptive probe um, of detection so it's a series of algorithms that analyze the signal to determine if the pulse oximeter sensor is uh, of patient so this is the least sensitive one in picking up a reading in patients with low perfusion uh, then we have the normal one the, and the maximum so the normal one is the best combination between the two and the maximum one is the best to pick up a reading in patients with low perfusion. Um, so you can adjust uh, this option um, to, uh, accordingly to uh, the status of your patient. Um, so here we can change the between the different profiles, we 
can set different profiles and swap between them in this menu. We can also change the sensitivity mode. We can increase or decrease the silence duration. Um, and we can also enable or disable the smart tone. So what's the smart tone? On many pulse oximeters, the pulse tone um, is related to the morphology of the plethysmographic waveform and they are going to emit a tone just when there is a clean pulse signal um, whereas with this uh, function enabled the Mazimo Radical 7 um, is, um, is able to identify the artery wave under low signal to noise conditions and give a variable pitch tone uh, instead of uh, loss of signal. Um, going back to the main screen, here we can set the Bluetooth to connect this device to the root monitor so that we can use this one on the patient and they have the values on the root monitor as well. Um, we can go in the battery settings, volume settings where we can set the alarm volume, pulse tone volume, and silence duration and smart tone as well in this menu. So you're gonna find that some of the settings are uh, present in different menus, so it's quite redundant, but that's useful to um, have access to them quick access to them even if we if we are in a in another menu and uh, we actually we don't have to go and dig in into several menus to find them um, um, so here we can set date time language uh, date and time formats um, on the central part of the screen we have these values actually here we have sp2 with its maximum and minimum alarm uh, we have the plot variability index with this, its maximum maximum and minimum alarms we can drag and drop this um, values in another part of the screen so it's entirely customizable uh, we can have all the values in the top screen or in the lower part of the screen or we can decide which value have on the top part or which value have on the lower part um, so here we have pulse rate, pul um, pulse index. Here we have, now we have the plethysmograph plus signal EQ, um, but we can have the pulse index trend, plot variability index trend, pulse rate trend, um, SP2 trend. So we can really customize everything in this screen. Um, so actually what's the plot variability index and what's the uh, pulse index, the plot variability index uh, is, um, is a measure of the dynamic changes in uh, pulse index that occur in the respiratory cycle, whereas the pulse index is the ratio of pulsatile blood flow to the non-pulsatile or static blood in peripheral tissue so it gives us an idea of perfusion <clears throat> uh, clicking on a value we go in that value settings so we can set the alarms for it we can set the averaging time and the fast set for SP2 an example so we can go down to two seconds on averaging time uh, obviously the averaging time um, a solo averaging time allow for high fidelity 
um, pulse oximeter performances, whereas with FastSat, um, we enable uh, a rapid tracking of arterial oxygenation status changes. So these two can be very useful. Obviously, they, we can set up them accordingly to our situation, the situation of our patient. Um, so in a setting like an ICU, we can decide to increase or decrease the intensity of the care for a certain patient. Uh, so this had to have a um, a control over a patient reducing and we can try to reduce the amount of false alarms so this is useful as I said in an ICU setting because we don't want to have 10, 15 or 20 devices beeping at the same time maybe for uh, no reason so here we can also set the deceleration index. Um, so if we have a deceleration, a data deceleration of 4% or above in one hour time uh, for like three times or more, this pulse oximeter is gonna give an alarm. Um, here we have a brief description of those functions and was uh, sp2 here we have the in vivos where we can set an offset for the sp2 here we can set the trends and the histograms so we can set our y-axis maximum and minimum um, here we have the the white line that's the trend and the red circles are the errors so if we click on them we can have the kind of error and at what time and how was the sp2 at that point we can pinch to zoom to decrease the time frame or we can decrease it or we can also click here and set our time frame here this indicator gives us an idea of the versatility in that in this moment to don't lose i mean a control over our patient and we still have all the values here so sp2 pulse rate pvi and pi um, so we can go to the histograms here so uh, for the time that I'm wearing this pulse oximeter for 4.8% um, of the time it was between the celebration was between 81 and 85 for the 5.2% of the time was between 86 and 90 and for the 49.1% it was between 91 and 95 and for the 40.9% of the time was between 96 and 100 um, so, going back to the normal screen, um, we can see the settings for the other values like PVI, we can set an averaging time for it as well. Um, we have a brief description of PVI, we can set the trends and the histograms for it as well. We also we have the same settings for PI, so averaging time, alarms. We can set a PI delta alarm. So if the perfusion at the monitor side decreased by a certain amount um, over a specific time, this pulse oximeter is going to give an alarm. We can set the trends and the histograms for the PI as well, and the same basically for the PR settings. So, alarms, brief description, and settings for trends and histograms. So, here instead we have the main menu where we can set 
<clears throat> we can change the settings for the previous cited parameters. We have again the profile settings, the sound menu. Again, as I said, it's quite redundant in in this, but that's good. We have the device settings. So actually, one thing that I didn't show you is the fact that this pulse oximeter can be used in all the positions because it has an accelerometer and we can obviously disable this feature here on the screen orientation setting uh, we have the localization as i say to set date time etc wi-fi bluetooth settings battery settings brightness that's useful to decrease the the battery usage so we can set the how to brightness of the screen or we can set uh, manually the brightness of the screen so with the how to brightness it adjusts the brightness of the screen according to the illumination styles of the of the room and this is useful to to don't use too much battery where it's not necessary uh, we can have access to the sun menu as well from here um, so here all the menus have this little bar so that we can jump from one setting to another even if we not even if we don't if we don't want to scroll for the entire menu so uh, <clears throat> we have the 3d alarms so the deceleration index pi delta from here as well then the trans settings we can change them here as well <clears throat> <clears throat> so as i said i think this is a very very useful device um, it has upgradable rainbow technology so we can obtain more non-invasive measurements just with some software update um, i think this is a very important piece of equipment uh, to have in an icu setting or uh, in anesthesia as well um, it's very well built seems very robust very durable um, so um, there are some studies in humans where they found that the Massimo SET increases the ability to detect life-threatening events and decrease false alarm so this is something to think about it and the only cons that I've found so far uh, is that the screen is maybe a little bit too sensitive but other than that um, I think I can just recommend this uh, device so I think that's all for today uh, don't forget to subscribe our YouTube channel and thank you for watching